Hey, what's up guys? Tony Dubs here and today I'm doing a video review on the Philips 436M6. Now this, according to Philips, is the first monitor to actually hit the display HDR 1000 standard. Now in TVs you've got HDR and there's different levels of the HDR and therefore that normally determines the price of a TV. Um, Various manufacturers use different terminologies, but in all honesty, the HDR standard is pretty much a, a universal standard. Unfortunately, when it comes to PC monitors or massive wannabe PC monitors like uh, what we've got in front of us, the HDR standard is kind of lost and you've got somewhat a fake HDR. Manufacturers claiming to have a HDR technology where in, in all honesty it doesn't hit the HDR standards. Now um, in terms of the display HDR standards, the, dis um, the HDR 400, I think 800 and also 1000. Now this monitor is certified for the HDR 1000 um, uh, standard, which means it should hit 1000 nits when um, a HDR image or HD, HDR um, input um, is detected. Now I'll get into that in just a bit, but first of all I want to talk about the specs. Now this monitor is massive, it's 43 inch or 42.51 inch to be specific. Um, in terms of its aspect ratio, it's 16 by 9. It has a 4 milliseconds um, response time quoted response time. It, it uses an MVA quantum dot um, panel in order to uh, get the most out of uh, the HDR display in terms of also the contrast ratio as well. Um, it's also got built-in speakers. Now the built-in speakers normally are not something I would um, actually comment on, but however in this respect you've got DTS uh, certification and you've got two 7 watt speakers which in all honesty are absolutely sensational. I played um, music through um, through the speaker, uh, through the, the monitors obviously with through the speakers and I was absolutely uh, surprised of how loud and how clear um, the monitor was able to, to do. Now I'll get into that in just a bit when it comes to a bit of a sound demo and also through the OSD settings. In terms of input, you've got HDMI 2.0, DisplayPort 1.2, you've got Mini DisplayPort 1.2, and USB-C. Now, uh, the monitor also has two USB 3.0 ports, two of which have fast charging capabilities, which is fantastic. Uh, it's got an audio input and output via 3.5mm jack. And then finally, it's also got a fixed stand um, and um, at the back you've got uh, Visa capabilities as well so you can uh, replace it, you can wall mount it uh, if you so wish. Now full descriptions of um, the monitor will be in the description below. Now before I get into anything, I want to talk about price. Now UK price is around £750. Um, as far as I'm an, uh, aware, it's announced at $1,000 which translates to around that figure. So bear that in mind, I'm, I'm bearing it at the $1,000 mark. Now in, in terms of the build quality and design, now the monitor has, it hasn't got a borderless design, but it's got a glossy uh, bezel all the way around. Let me just bring you closer uh, to the monitor so you guys can get a better look at it um, and you can see. Now the monitor, as you can see, it looks um, relatively nice. Um, I can't have any sort of complaints if I was using it um, and um, I'm, I'm placing it on my uh, on my desk. But one thing you should note is underneath the monitor you've got a Philips AmbiGlow. For those who are aware of what Philips AmbiGlow is, it means that it adjusts to what the picture is and tries to put you in the picture in terms of put your room into the picture. So you can see I've got a kind of whitish image. It's coming with a whitish LED. The AmbiGlow can be uh, custom through the settings and I'll get into that in just a bit. Just looking at the monitor's uh, stands as well, the monitor's stand is relatively big so you're going to have to bear that in mind if you're going to be placing it on a desk uh, or um, uh, on, on some sort of TV on some sort and you can see at the back you've got the um, uh, the Visa, uh, It's if I'm not mistaken it's 100 times 100 um, amount so I could be wrong so just bear that in mind. Now the monitor has a slight tilt, it's, it's quite um, 
it's not that substantial. Uh, however, given the size of the monitor and the viewing angles, I don't think you're going to have a problem. So overall, in terms of build quality, you have absolutely no problem. Now, one thing that's quite interesting is that it comes with, yes, a remote. Now, um, a lot of people were wondering, why would you get a big size monitor, which is most of the case, but without a remote? Now, thankfully, uh, Philips have included a remote, and therefore, through it, we can access the OSD. If, however, you don't, if you lose your remote or don't have the remote, they there's a little joystick button at the back of the monitor, pretty much where I'm pointing my finger around the back, and you can access the OSD there. Now, the, the, the remote, I must say, is a nice inclusion. However, I'm not sure if it's battery related or if I've got sort of interference in my room, but uh, the, the remote sometimes just wouldn't respond to my, uh, my clicks, uh, especially if I was quite close, uh, it wouldn't respond. So you can see I'm pressing down but it's not responding at all. So I'm not sure about that, but I thought I should comment on it nevertheless. Now, uh, within the settings, now if I just bring you, if I bring the EV down of my um, camera and then bring you guys closer to um, the OSD, you guys will be able to see what I'm actually talking about. So first of all, you've got the AmbiGlow settings. Now within the AmbiGlow settings, um, you can see that you, I've got it on AmbiGlow and I've got it on the brightest settings. You can turn down the brightness. You've got it auto mode as well, which basically is almost like an RGB lit um, AmbiGlow. It's, it, it cycles through. And then you've got user defined where you can customize uh, the color yourself um, to whatever you like. So personally, I like it having on the AmbiGlow setting and on the brightest settings. Low blue mode, in my respect, I've had it disabled but you can enable it if you want. Inputs, you can quickly flick through them. Now picture, the HDR mode. So I've got HDR as off right now and I will be going into detail about this uh, in just a bit. So do bear that in mind, I'll come back to that setting. Brightness, I've got it at 60 and again, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that in just a bit. Contrast 50, sharpness 50, smart response faster um, and I'll talk about that when I get to the gaming. There's a lot of I will talk about but th there is there's reason behind my logic. You've got PIP and PBB mode which also is quite useful if you've got uh, another image input coming in and you can have a sort of like a split screen type view. Um, smart size as well, customize the, how the, the, the panel looks. Audio, which I talked about before. So over here you can see you've got the DTS input. Now if I have DTSs off, suddenly you've got an EQ band. Now the EQ band, now if I could, if the, the remote, well, there we go, you've got a five band equalizer, which is actually quite cool to have. It's not often that you'll see this. However, even with the equalizer, I prefer DTS with on, and I felt that the music was just a little bit better. You've got the color settings, now I've got it on sRGB. You can go and use a define and you've got uh, set color temperatures which you can play around with. As you can see, you don't often see the 11,500 Kelvin one uh, included, but nevertheless it is over here. I would suggest sRGB because I felt I got the best colors out of it. Um, so then you've got language setting, OSD settings, and the setup as well. So you can set up what the USB is, resolution notice, um, uh, USB standby, so you can plug in stuff, low input lag mode, which I highly suggest you putting on, and then information about the panel and your resolution. I know it's been quite a, uh, quite a lot that I've been talking about uh, so far, but hopefully you're going to understand why it's worth it. So as I said, I will get on to sound now. Um, I'll link this uh, song in the description below. This song, you'll be able to hear it, just you won't believe, but it's actually coming straight from the monitor. <laughs> So hopefully you're able to hear there with a little demo of what the DTS actually does. In all honesty, I felt the DTS rounded up the music a little bit better. You've got a better frequency throughout the uh, better frequency range. So from the mids to the, the mid, uh, the mid bass, uh, even to the highs, they just sound a little bit more, uh, they work better in cohesion. Whereas without DTS, I felt that the, the sound and the instruments just didn't sound as natural. Uh, even though I could EQ it, I just wasn't as happy. So very impressed with that, especially with the DTS uh, enabled. So great job Philips in, in terms of including that. So now let's get into the business end of stuff. Let's talk about the panel quality. So first of all, in terms of um, how I feel about it in terms of the image. Now, first of all, I'd like to mention about the uh, viewing angles. Now the viewing angles on an MVA panel are absolutely fantastic. You've got no sort of problems no matter where you're sitting. Of course, at very extreme angles, you're gonna see a tail off 
as if you will see it with any sort of monitor. Now in terms of the, the color reproduction, how it looks, I must say the monitor looks fantastic. Um, it is has a slightly washed out feel versus a class leading IPS uh, panel. However, this MVA panel that Philips have done is great. Colors are vibrant. Uh, the contrast ratio is fantastic. Um, and in terms of the color accuracy itself, I was very impressed. However, I should say that in comparison to an IPS panel or in comparison to some of the IPS panels that I've come across, even from Philips themselves, I feel that this monitor has a slightly washed out tone. The wash out uh, is very, very slight, but if you come from a trained eye, you will notice it. If however you, you get the monitor you, and you've not come across a class leading um, IPS, you've come from a crappy TN or, or, or something like that, then you will see that this monitor is a remarkably good monitor. Now, just quickly touching about the color, um, I want to say that um, at the calibrated sRGB profile, I got about 440 um, uh, nits, which yes, it's well under the HDR standard, but that's because uh, display cal and display cal the display calibrator and windows weren't on HDR, so you have to bear that in mind. This is a non-HDR calibration at the sRGB standard. It hits um, a 0.1 um, nits uh, black level, which is fantastic, and a huge 3,780 to 1 contrast ratio. That's absolutely incredible. Now, in terms of the overall color accuracy, as you can see, it's pretty much green across the board. Hopefully, you can see that on my on the camera. But you've got an average delta of 1.52, which is fan yeah, it's, it's fantastic for a consumer grade monitor. So I have no sort of complaints there. However, the story changed when you have the um, the uh, the brightness uniformity now here you can clearly see now hopefully the camera is, is picking it up but you can clearly see that there's white boxes clearer at the bottom and darker boxes at the top and that's simply because the monitors I think is is edge lit and from uh, from underneath and therefore kind of struggles at the top end so at the top end I've got a minus about minus 18 variance from the center point a minus 16 over here and minus 10 at the top hand uh, top right hand side and even a plus 15 um, at the bottom so it is very much edge lit from the bottom and if you're a photo editor or video editor, you're going to see that this monitor does um, does struggle in some respects, obviously, if you're going to use this as full screen. Now, I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but this is a 4K monitor, so that's why you might be seeing the text is very small, but of course, that's to do with display scaling. You can change that to your preference. I've just put it 100%, but you know, if, if you want to use this monitor from a far distance, I would suggest going onto the window settings, the display settings, that is, and uh, setting it to 300% and that will pretty much scale everything to absolutely massive as I've just done right now. You can see everything is massive. Total resolution is 3840 times 2160 at 60 hertz. So now, what about gaming? How does it do in terms of gaming? Now, this monitor is aimed for console uh, gamers. However, I still should uh, note that most of my tests, well, most of all, all my tests that I do on monitors are um, on Counter-Strike, and that's a PC game. Of course, you, I think you can find Counter-Strike in various different uh, formats, but the PC game is, is obviously where it's at. It's the, OG, it's the OG variant of it. What I can say is that the monitor does a relatively good job. It's got a very good uh, input lag for a monitor of its size. I must say it was very impressive, uh, especially with the low input lag mode enabled. I found that the monitor to be actually really good. The response time of the monitor, however, um, could be better. Um, and obviously with the refresh rate at 60 hertz, you know, you can't expect to be competitively gaming. I don't know why on earth you would be doing. Uh, but for casual gaming, you'll find that the response time monitor is, is perfectly acceptable, especially at the faster setting. At the fastest setting, I felt there was too much inverse ghosting that was occurring. And with it um, at the response time set to off, I felt that the monitor struggled with the uh, overall response time. So overall, what I would say is set it to the faster setting, uh, then you will get a perfect blend between the, the, the faster response time uh, and um, the lowest amount of inverse ghosting uh, that you will see. And, and honestly, it, I must say it is really good in terms of that. Uh, the overall response time for a monitor of its class is actually uh, pretty impressive. And you can see that there's not much smearing and in terms of input, it's really good. The, the input lag is, is very much impressive. So that low input lag mode is definitely suggested. So for gaming, it's good. 
Bear in mind, it is made for console gamers, so it's more, if you're going to be using it for PC, for casual gaming rather than competitive gaming. So I told you I'd get to the HDR element of this video, which is arguably the most important part. And right now I have got my laptop set up with a display calibrator currently calibrating. Um, now I'm going to reduce the EV of my camera, so it's going to get a bit dark then draw you closer so you guys can see the figure so right now um, it is currently at 265 now what I'm gonna do is place that calibrator on the screen now you might be wondering why on earth would you do that reason why is because I can't display a HDR image properly to test on this so what I'm gonna do you can see potentially in the background that I had an Xbox One uh, Xbox One S are connected. That is using the Samsung HDR pattern that the factory use from 2016, as you can he can see here. So courtesy of uh, Samsung for that. And right now you'll be see be able to see on your screen a sort of HDR pattern. Now what I'm going to do is um, it's going it's to be a bit tricky, but I'm going to get the camera off and try and show you this. So first of all. Uh, you can see the pattern over here. This is using the HDR mode, uh, using HDR off, and you'll be able to see this figure um, is going to change. So it's right now at 265, and right now it's placed at the center, and you can see it's gone up to about 350 odd. Um, so you can see right now. Um, the monitor, uh, the monitor, the Philips monitor gets to around that. You can see me sticking up um, the 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 display calibrator. So now what we're going to do is go on the HDR um, pattern. So if I just go into the the settings with the remote, go into picture HDR Visa one thousand. Straight away. The camera will even pick this up. It gets a lot brighter. So now we're going to do the same thing with this calibrator. Put it into the center, as you can see right now. And there you go. Hopefully the camera is picking this up. You've got 1045. So I can confirm this is a Visa, well, a, a HDR 1000 display, as you can see, certified um, like so. So, it does the HDR 1000, but what on earth does that mean? Great question, and let me show you. Now this is going to be pretty obvious um, when you look at it, and you might be wondering why on earth did, uh, did you have to show me this? But I want to prove to you that actually HDR has its capabilities, and what the capabilities are. So within this um, um, testing screen, uh, which again, uh, provided by Samsung, so thank you to them. There's the HDR kind of loop. So I'm just going to pause this at this frame, and this is using the HDR, so hopefully you can see beautiful colors, you can see the, uh, the, the animals in the back, the ducks in the back, and you're going to see a, a beautiful white building at, uh, in, the, um, in the background. Now if I go and turn off this, you're going to see an absolute massive difference. Suddenly, the color is washed out, the image isn't as accurate, and yes, it looks relatively nice, but it's nowhere near as accurate and as beautiful as what we were just seeing. So, what I'm trying to say over here is that that HDR 1000 uh, by Visa or the UHDA mode makes a massive difference. As an FYI, the UHDA mode also hits around 1000, whereas the normal mode of HDR hits around 800 nits, and then HDR off hits around 450. So that is what HDR um, 1000 is, and this is what uh, that, this Philips monitor is. If I just play uh, this scene, if, it, um, if I can work out, there we go. I play the scene, and you'll see it uh, cycling through various different things, there we go, you'll see that the monitor is able to reproduce fantastic colours, is absolutely beautiful in terms of its uh, overall brightness, and the HDR element really comes out to its fullest. So there we go guys, that's been my mo uh, monitor review. It's been absolutely a long monitor review because it's been one of the most complicated monitors to explain and showcase with all of its features. This monitor is directly aimed for those people who are console gamers, 
those people who want a nice looking monitor with ambi glow, those people who are looking for a low input lag monitor, and more impo importantly, those, those people who are looking to play back HDR content at its fullest. Now of course this doesn't replace a TV, at least in my opinion, because it doesn't have a TV tuner. However, it is something that people can use and alongside with their PCs can create a complete and utter entertainment system and be it the main display of, of the house. It's a beautiful display and in all honesty, the only complaint I have is that it has slightly washed out colours. And of course, its price is very, very hefty for what it's offering. But it is one of its kind. And if you're looking for that in the market for such a monitor, then this is very much the best monitor in the market or the only mo monitor currently in the market that really offers something like it. So there we go, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed this really thorough and in-depth video and a good insight of how to actually test the monitor. I've been totally dubbed. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Sorry for the length of the video. There's no ifs and buts around it, but I want to show you everything and be in-depth as, as possible. And more than anything, if you can subscribe and like, it would very much help my channel grow. As always, absolutely love seeing um, more people um, tuning in and seeing my honest, unbiased, unpaid reviews. All right, guys, I've been totally dubbed. Take care and bye-bye.